Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. I had the pleasure of talking at the Open Group's EA and Sustainability Conference recently. And one of the things I picked up from there was the architectural challenge of balancing the environmental cost of measuring, recording and reporting on, say, something like a carbon footprint of something with the environmental savings that could be gained by doing so. In other words, our own IT, when we develop it and operate it, brings energy consumption. If the measurement overhead that we're adding to the equation outweighs the potential of what we could save, we're not helping, we're actually making things worse. So whilst it isn't really a Schrodinger's cat or observer's effect, it does suggest that we need architectural guidance as to how to estimate the environmental impact before we build something, which in an agile incremental development is going to be much harder than planned out efforts. Carbon footprint t-shirt sizing, anyone? Welcome everybody to Toolkit Tuesday. Um, welcome back. Um, as the regulars will know, we are on a weekly cycle at the moment. Um, so we're uh, getting even more content uh, out to you and uh, hope you're finding it useful. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're keeping safe and well, and we're glad that you've chosen to join us today. Before going any further, my thanks uh, as ever to Mr. Paul Homan of IBM for his EA minutes. He's always um, uh, leaves us with much to think about um, after these things. So great thoughts, Paul. Thank you as ever. Um, before we start uh, with today's topic, we're going to um, make a shameless plug. I'm going to make a shameless plug for the Open Group Summit, which is happening in London uh, on April the 17th to the 19th. In fact, it goes on to the 20th for one or two of our groups. But April 17th to the 19th, Westminster, London. Um, lots of our groups coming together and we are um, uh, having some great sessions on different topics, including an expanded session on today's topic, which is the portfolio of digital open standards. So I'll get to that in just a moment. But before that, uh, just a uh, reminder or a, a, a uh, intro to the WebEx tool and how we ask questions on Toolkit Tuesday. Um, we do, please do that through the Q&A channel. Uh, and if you can't see that, please click on the three dots in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And that will give you the uh, chance to click on Q&A and then please ask questions of our speaker. Um, through that. Uh, do feel free to use the chat channel to communicate with each other. Uh, we particularly love hearing where you're all joining us from. That's become a, a Toolkit Tuesday and in fact a, a thing of the open group generally. Um, we do have people joining us at, the, at these from all around the world and we're, we're very proud of it. And uh, please tell us where you're from uh, in the chat channel. But uh, uh, questions, Q&A. Um, so yeah, Q and A, Q of Q&A for questions. There we go. So um, without further ado, I'm going to uh, introduce our topic and our speaker today. So the topic is one that hopefully you may have heard of uh, before, the portfolio of digital open standards, which we've been working on for a little while now. We have uh, an MVP online for you to see. And I hope I'm not uh, stealing too much of Chris's thunder when I uh, when I go into this, but uh, we're basically bringing together uh, various established standards of the open group uh, in a more 
uh, cross-referenced and, and usable way together. So I'll, I'll stop there with the intro of the topic and, and introduce our speaker, who is uh, Mr. Chris Frost, um, who is actually one of the panel of experts we have here on Toolkit Tuesday. So it's a welcome back for Chris. Uh, Chris is based in the UK and has worked for Fujitsu since 2005 in a variety of techn technical leadership roles. At present, he is a principal enterprise architect within the Global Delivery Architecture Division, responsible for architecture standards and governance. That's his day job. Within the Open Group, Chris is co-chair of the Digital Portfolio Working Group, which is the group that is uh, spearheading this initiative he will talk about today. And he is also a contributing member in several architecture forum activities. Uh, he also sits on the Open Group Governing Board, so very active inside the Open Group. Before Fujitsu, Chris worked for EDS, which is now part of, of DXC, on several large contracts for the UK Ministry of Defence. And in earlier years, he worked for Ford, Shell and a small software startup called Shamrock Marketing. How appropriate in the week of St. Patrick's Day. So um, a warm welcome back, as I say, to Toolkit Tuesday for Chris Frost. Welcome, sir. OK, so thank you very much, Steve. And uh... Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Um, thank you for that introduction, Steve. So, as, as Steve said, uh, I'm an architect with Fujitsu, and uh, you know, one of the things I really don't like doing is reinventing wheels and uh, having to grapple with problems that it turns out that uh, other people have already solved. And that's one of the reasons why I think this uh, portfolio of standards that we're building with the open group is particularly useful. And uh, as we go through the presentation today, uh, I hope you'll understand uh, why I think that's particularly useful and hopefully you will find it valuable too. So first of all, um, what, what is this thing that we're talking about, the portfolio of digital open standards? In short, it's a combination of standards from the Open Group, making a sort of a comprehensive super standard for digital business and digital products, digital transformation and the like. Um, as Steve mentioned, we've recently released uh, an MVP and you can see uh, on the screenshot on the right hand side there um, what the front page looks like and the URL for that. Um, that's out there now. Um, and our goal with it is to make this portfolio, Portfolio of Digital Open Standards, uh, the best source of standards for digital business. Now, we've been evolving this for oh, um, uh, something over a year now. Um, the MVP that I just mentioned was released uh, back in October 2022. And uh, the current status with it is that we've got the top level view, as you can see it there. Um, there's a comprehensive uh, cross standard search facility, which is a very powerful thing. And within the, uh, the, the framework of the portfolio, we've currently got uh, a number of the open group standards uh, loaded into it. Um, DPBOC, IT for IT, the OAA and the TOGAF standard. And uh, there's plenty of work in progress right now. Um, we're working on adding more content. Uh, so we're uh, hopefully going to have the contents of the Archimate standard uh, added in very shortly. We're working on improving the integration between those standards, uh, the, the user experience of, uh, of using the portfolio. And we are doing some joint activity with the uh, Open Group Security Forum to uh, to work on some additional security content. So um, we're constantly working to evolve this portfolio and, and make it broader uh, and more powerful. But my theme here is help for architects. So let me sort of talk a little bit more about specifically how this helps architects. So within this portfolio, we've got um, a number of the general architecture standards from the Open Group. We've got TOGAF, the World Front Standard EA Framework. We've got the OAA, the Agile Architecture Standard. And uh, as you just heard very shortly, Archimate. We've also got uh, a number of uh, broader digital business standards. So we've got 
IT for IT, a reference architecture to the digital product lifecycle. We've got the DP box, which is all about competencies and open fair. But um, I guess many of these things will not be so familiar to all of you. Um, it's quite typical um, through membership of the open group that you perhaps come in because you're interested in one of the standards in particular. For example, you join the architecture forum because you're interested in TOGAF. Um, but maybe don't see so much of some of the other standards. So I'm just going to take a real quick tour through these things and then come back to sort of look up. All right. So what does that mean for you as an architect? How can you use these things to help you in your work? So let's start with TOGAF, um, probably one of the better known standards from the open group. Um, TOGAF is the TOGAF standard is an enterprise architecture framework. And at its core, um, you've got uh, the three parts, the ADM, the general purpose architecture development method, you've got the content framework, um, which you can think of it really as just a, a map of the all the different parts you need in an architecture description. Uh, and you've got uh, some pieces on capability and governance, which is really dealing with all of the people sides of an architecture organization. You've also got a rich set of guides as over 20 TOGAF series guides covering a whole variety of different topics, additional guidance on setting up teams, um, guidance on business architecture, um, reference models on government business, for example, There's a whole, whole host of different topics in there and many other guidance documents and white papers. So although it's called an enterprise architecture framework, yeah, I really would say there's something in it for all architects, not just those with enterprise in their title. There's also the OAA. Um, that's, uh, that covers architecture for digital and agile enterprise transformation. And it's designed to complement frameworks, agile frameworks like SAFE and LESS and all of these other uh, agile frameworks that I'm sure you will have heard of. Um, and essentially, it's con it consists of a core plus some building blocks and that the core um, introduces uh, the fundamental concepts and the structure of the OAA and, and sort of talks about this need to do a dual um, agile and digital transformation, sort of making the point that if you're doing a digital transformation, you really are also doing an agile transformation of an organization. And then, as I mentioned, you have the, the OAA building blocks, um, which goes into the topics in greater detail. For example, looks at agile strategy, agile organizations, software architecture, and, and many other topics. You can see some of the building blocks um, in the graphic on the right hand side of the screen taken from the OAA standard. Archimate. Archimate is a uh, graphical modeling language for enterprise architecture. Um, and essentially, um, it covers a standard specification of a number of shapes, icons, line types to enable us to model um, all of these aspects of enterprise architecture, so business strategy, business architecture, and so on. You can see them all on the screen. And so it describes the, the sort of um, symbology, to, uh, standard symbology to, to model all of these things. And you can see an example. Um, on the screen on the right hand side there. Now, um, I haven't got time in this presentation to go through it all in detail, um, but essentially what you're looking at here in this example is um, this part up, up here with the with the chevrons is uh, is a value stream in Archimate, business value stream, uh, and these uh, objects underneath um, with a little sort of uh, square symbols. These are uh, business capabilities. So it's sort of showing you how the, the value stream is, is made up a number of business capabilities. But I have to move on. Um, so next I want to cover IT for IT. Um, that is a reference architecture that covers the whole range of IT business and digital product lifecycle. Um, it's divided at the top level into a number of uh, functionality groups, as they're called, and those are the things in the sort of um, dark blue 
um, on the slide. So um, these things called plan and build and, and deliver that you can see in the in the dark blue color. Uh, plan covering all of those things to do with um, planning a digital strategy in your portfolio. Build uh, essentially to do with the construction of digital products. Deliver, um, deploying those and um, allowing customers to consume and run covering all of the sort of operational things around um, detection and correction of issues. There's also at the top level um, a number of value streams, and these are the things you can see in the uh, in the graphic in the uh, grey arrows. So you've got seven top level value streams that cross through these functionality groups, um, evaluate, explore, integrate, deploy, release, consume, operate. And you can you can sort of understand, I'm sure, from the words how they sort of walk through the, the whole of the product lifecycle. Now, you, know, you might think, OK, you, you can see any number of um, sort of reference model diagrams like that. If you just go out onto the Internet and you know, maybe Google reference models and things like that. But the, the real power of IT for IT is that it provides quite a lot of deep detail um, behind all of those things, um, behind um, the functions and the data that you need to flow across them to make that entire digital business and digital product lifecycle function. Um, next, Open Fair. Um, Open Fair is a framework for information security risk analysis. Um, the standards has uh, basically two parts. Um, there's the uh, ORA, Open Risk Analysis, as it's called, which is a, a method for analysis, a systematic analysis of information security risk. And then to go with that, there's a part called the ORT, that's the Open Risk Taxonomy. Um, and that describes a standard taxonomy, so it's essentially a standard a sort of um, dictionary of terms that you use to describe risk management as information security risk management, because when you're doing these things with a degree of formality, you know, you do need to be a little careful of your terminology and a little precise in your terminology um, of how you analyze and manage the risks. And then within the open fair material, there's also a number of other um, guides and examples, um, such as uh, how to apply open fair within the US uh, NIST framework and uh, a uh, an example of using open fair in how to do cyber risk analysis around some network connected uh, medical equipment and you can imagine there's some obvious um, cyber security risks to think about if you're going to network connect some um, medical equipment so it's a, you can think of it as sort of a synthetic uh, case study on how to apply open fair And then um, completing the tour through these standards uh, that I'm going to cover here today is the DPBOC, um, the Digital Practitioner's Body of Knowledge. Now that provides um, an overview and gives some guidance around all of the competencies needed by a digital practitioner. And the way it's organised is um, according to the scale of a digital enterprise. And so if you imagine um, starting off um, a new digital enterprise initially as a sole founder uh, and then growing it up it, to become first of all a team and then teams of teams and so on. Um, these are what in the DP Bok language are called the four contexts and it starts off with that founder level so it looks at the sorts of things that a solo founder needs to be competent in when they start off with some new um, digital product so you can imagine I don't know, Jeff Bezos in his garage just starting out to Amazon and the sorts of competences you need there you can um, see them at the uh, bottom of the diagram here with this founder context you need to know obviously a little bit about digital fundamentals, understand a little bit about digital infrastructure and application delivery. But at that point, you know, that, that is pretty much your entire world. Then as that uh, organization grows, you get a few more people gathered around you and now become a team. And uh, now um, you need to add a few more competencies. So um, now you've got a 
team of people you perhaps need to think a little bit more formally about your work management you know sort of planning your work organizing your resources that sort of thing um, operations management now you've got um, um, more people involved in looking after this digital product whatever it is and of course product management then as we continue to grow the next of these contexts as the dp bot calls them um, we grow into the team of teams and now we're layering on things like um, portfolio management because we might have more than one product at this point. Um, we need to think a lot more about um, how we coordinate across our growing enterprise and the sorts of processes that we'll be following and organisation and, and culture start to become significant. And then finally, um, when, grown, when the company's grown up to be a, a large, long-lasting enterprise, the enduring enterprise, as DPBot calls them, that's when you need to think about some of these things like governance, risk and compliance. Um, architecture, of course, now becomes much more important. Now we're organising at a much larger scale and so on. So the, the DPBot covers these 12, as they're called, competency areas. You can see them listed here on the diagram, um, which are arranged into these four contexts as they're called and just outlining all of those competencies that you need as you go through those sort of stages of uh, of growth of a um, of a digital enterprise so that was a really quick tour through um, some of the standards within the uh, the digital portfolio but just to sort of come back to this theme about help for architects and um, how does this help you as an architect well if you think about creating the architecture from digital product then i've got straight away i've got TOGAF and oaa just giving me general architecture framework and architecture guidance about how to do my job as an architect i've got Archimate that helps me that describes for me how to do the diagrams for example the uh, diagramming my bdat um, business data application technology um, architecture domains i've got it for it that gives me that framework um, for the total life cycle of product introduction and product support um, and that means that as i'm going through um, developing the architecture i can it gives me a reference point to make sure I think of all of the things necessary, not just the sort of core business functionality, but all of the things I need necessary to make sure that I, I understand how I'm going to release the product, how users consume it, how they can subscribe to it, you know, all of those things, I log in and access management and all of those things, and then all of the things also needed in day-to-day -day operation. So IT for IT helps me make sure that I design a complete and consumable and supportable product. Um, I've got the DP box and that helps me understand the sorts of people I need, the sorts of competencies I need within my overall product team. All of the people and with all of the skills, the competencies I need to conceive the product, design, build and operate that product. And then finally, of course, I've got uh, I've got the open fair to help make sure that I have secured that product. So to summarize very quickly, um, this portfolio is uh, I think a great source of material for architects and some really useful things for you to use as you're going through developing the architecture of digital products. Um, it is something that's under development at the moment. It's growing and improving. We welcome feedback. Um, and uh, if you go to the portfolio, you'll see in the top right hand corner of it, um, there is a feedback button. Please use it. And finally on this, if you want to find out more, please join the Open Group Conference um, in London, as Steve mentioned before, April the 17th to the 20th, and we'll be talking a lot more about this. And finally, there's the URL again on the screen. And that's uh, that's all I had to say uh, right now, except, of course, I think it's time to pass on to questions. And Steve, if you want to come back and um, help me go through the, any questions that have been asked. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris, for that uh... Great overview. Thank you very much. And um, we we do have some questions, um, but uh, they're going to be. I mean, one one of the things we we get asked a lot is, you know, um, it's it's great that we have this initial MVP, and I really do encourage people to go and see it um, on our on our website um, and just have a have an explore in there. But you know, we've got some standards in there. And it's great to pull together things like TOGAF and OAA and IT4IT. You know, 
is the group working towards having all standards added to the portfolio? All standards of the so, open group, obviously. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, do you know, I mean, over time, yes, we plan to add, add more and more of them. Um, will we, would we ever get to a point where they're all in there? I can see there could be some reasons why some may remain separate. Uh, as you will know well, Steve, if we look across all of the standards within the open group, there are some that have particular restrictions around them of, of, of access with you know, particular kind of rules around them as to who can get involved. And so they might be tricky to sort of bring into this highly integrated framework. But I think in general, the theme is, yeah, you know, we'll sort of gradually and expand and expand that out of the sort of core of the common sort of architecture and digital product standards that we've got at the moment to gradually get wider and wider. Great, thank you. And uh, questions come in along a similar vein. Well, no, I guess it's slightly different different vein. Um, will the will the content in the portfolio of digital open standards be the place to go for information about them or, or like the only place to go or will uh, the individual sources of standards still be available from the Open Group website as they are now? Uh, yes, very, very much so. Um, there's, there's no plan to, for example, withdraw the Open Group library um, as it currently stands and all of the other things that are on the website. So, yes, you'll still be able to go to the library to, to download the PDFs because sometimes, you know, that, that's useful to be able to take that, um, that, that offline um, download. Um, but what this gives you is a much more sort of interactive, web friendly way to way to see these things. And although I kind of skipped over it a little bit when I was talking about the portfolio, I mentioned search. You know, one of the really powerful things you can do within that uh, portfolio but with the search is it enables you to search right across all of those open group standards that are loaded within the, the, the portfolio. And, you know, in a really simple clickety click way, just go through, oh, you know, Here's a here's a piece in TOGAF about such and such a topic, and here's a piece in IT for IT, and here's a piece in DBBOC, and that's really difficult to do if all you've got is is separate PDFs. Um, but the the portfolio makes it really easy to do. It's one of the really powerful things about it. Right, right. and I mentioned at the outset our global participation in the uh, in the open group, and one of the questions is is really around that, which is, you know. There are many um, translations and, and glossaries for open group standards into other languages, but right now the portfolio seems to be just in English. Any 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 plans for that to be different in the future? I mean, again, you're right. Uh, right now we're focusing on loading up all of the English language versions and um, yeah, that's probably going to remain the, the, the first priority. But certainly the language translations, um, you know, Togo, for example, I don't know how many languages it is, but TOGAF has been translated into uh, many, many standards, as have some of the others, uh, many, many different languages. So, yeah, just like a lot of uh, web presentation things, you could imagine putting some sort of um, language button in the, somewhere in the in the top of the standard framework and, and allow you to then automatically pull up the different language translations. So, you know, I, I can't give you a date for that now because we are progressively developing this thing, but it's certainly something we've talked about in the, we've just started, in fact, a stream of work that sort of looks particularly at the, the 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 user experience the customer experience of using that and it's all of those sorts of things that we're that we're thinking about in there about how it's used and the sorts of features that uh, we, we want to build into it so yeah the sort of different languages is certainly one thing that's on on the agenda great thank you chris i think in the interest of time we will we will leave it there there is a another question just come in i've seen which is about open fair which um i'm not sure you're in a well give it a shot um why open why uh, is open fair still foundation and no, there's no practitioner part to it um you know, I, I, I see that in the q a yeah i'm, I'm sorry i have to, to that refer that to somebody who's in the yeah. in the security forum specifically about the the, the certifications there. Sorry, I, I couldn't answer that one. No, absolutely. And, and there, there are, I mean, the uh, the security forum is going through revamping the um, the certification in conjunction with the Open Group certification team, revamping the program. So uh, 
watch this space for more information about uh, what that means for the Open Fair certification. But um, so we will. Thank you for that question, though. We will end it there, Chris. I very much appreciate you uh, contributing and sharing what's going on as usual. Um, and uh, it's hard to do in twenty minutes when there's so much to talk about. But uh, but lots to do. Uh, we try and keep these nice and short and to the point and uh, respect for everybody's time, not least your own. So thank you very much. Next week, folks, um, we are uh, coming back again. As I said, we're on a weekly cadence at the moment. So um, March the 21st, we will have my colleague, Andrew Josie, who is VP of Standards and Certification at the Open Group. And he will be talking, he'll be coming back to talk further about the TOGAF Standard 10th Edition and the TOGAF certification portfolio. If there's something that we get uh, more questions about than anything else right now at the Open Group, it's it's that topic. So if you're interested in that in any way, then please join us on April 21st, uh, sorry, March 21st, um, uh, next week, same time, same place, and uh, we'd love to have you with us. Meanwhile, keep well wherever you are. I'm Steve Nunn. Thank you for watching Toolkit Tuesday.